Hi, I'm Simon with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we're going to show you how to repair your appliance. Are you ready? Remember, anytime you work on your appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there is no chance of electrocution. Also, make sure you turn off the water supply to the washer. In this video, we'll show you how to replace the brake rotor in a Maytag washer. It's going to be a very easy repair. It should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. For this job, we're going to need a putty knife, a 5 16 inch nut driver, Phillips screwdriver, flat blade screwdriver. We're going to need a three Phillips screws, number 10 by 24 and lengths one and a half inch. Please make sure it's machine screws and a pair of needle nose pliers and a homemade support strap. When you open up the package, you're going to get a new brake rotor. The brake rotor is held by the spring to the brake stator allowing the washer to agitate. In reverse rotation, the brake spring is pushed up, releasing the brake rotor and allowing the tub to spin. If your washer starts making squeaking and screeching noises when it agitates and especially when it stops spinning, the brake rotor should be checked and replaced if needed. Also, it makes sense to replace the brake stator at the same time when you're replacing the brake rotor because it's most likely damaged too. Let's start with taping the lid down to the cabinet. Next, we're going to lift the top. We need to undo the clips here, approximately two and a half inches from the side. We're going to insert the putty knife and push down on the locking clip. Lift the top off. All right, slowly let it down. Then do the same thing on the opposite side. Remember, two and a half inches. Push it in. And now we can lift the top of the cabinet and install the support strap. And put those hooks through the holes. If you have the wall right behind the, the washer, you can support the top on the wall. And now we're going to use a 5 16 inch nut driver to remove the two screws that hold the front panel to the cabinet. Push the top to the side to get an access to the second screw. And then remote. Now we can remove the front panel. Tilt it towards you about 45 degrees and then pull it up to take off the bottom hinges. Slide the long wooden block behind the top so it will fit inside the frame. And lower the top. Now we're going to put the washer on its back. You may need the second person, it is heavy. Let's place a towel underneath here because we're going to have some oil dripping. Next, I would recommend you to glove yourself before proceeding. I'm going to push the motor to the right to loosen up the belt and I'm going to take the belt off the transmission pulley. All right, place the belt away. Remove the dust cap. Now using the flat blade screwdriver we're going to remove that locking clip. Put it inside the dust cap so it wouldn't get lost. Next, the thrust washer. Also goes in the cap. And then we're going to pull off the pulley together with the cam inside. So this is the stator and we need to take it out so it would go through the cutout. 
as you can see, it's all below here on the bottom. So we need to shim it up. We're going to use this little block of wood here. It goes inside on the top of the thicker block of wood. To put a piece of wood under the top, I will lift the top with one hand and place it under the end of the top. Just like that. Using the 5 16 inch nut driver, remove every other screw, total three, from the stator. Replace them using the Phillips screwdriver with the three one and a half inch screws. Remove the other three 5 16 inch screws from the stator. And now, please be careful what you're doing. Using the Phillips screwdriver, loosen up the remaining screws three turns at the time, alternating the screws. That releases the tension from the brake spring inside. When you'll see the stator hangs loose, remove the screws and pull it off. As I mentioned earlier, the stator most likely should be replaced also. The part number for the stator is WP35-6918. And if you don't have one, you can get it from appliancepartspros.com. Pull out the rotor. Install the brake spring into the cup. Now we need to remove the bearing from the old rotor. And we're going to use it on the new one. This is the old rotor next to the new one. If you don't have this part, you can get it from appliancepartspros.com. Here and next we're going to put uh, the bearings into the new rotor. So uh, I borrowed a little uh, oil and grease from the washer and uh, it has plenty. And put something on the bottom. Put some grease on the bottom of the bearing. Then we can install it. All right. Now it's ready to go in the washer. Make sure that the spring goes in, in the cup and then we can slide the rotor on. And the bearing wants to come out, but that's no, no, no. Now we're going to put a stator on. Match the holes and screw in the three long Phillips screws. And now we're going to alternate screws and tie them up. All right, as you can see, we're all the way in. You can see that the metal is over there, so we can put the shorter screws in. So using 5 16 inch nut driver, I'm going to install three screws. And after that, we can take out the Phillips screws. And replace them with the 5 16 inch ones. Next, we're going to put the transmission pulley together with this uh, white cam. Well, at least it used to be white on the shaft all the way in and the next step would be uh, putting that uh, thrust washer and now we need to install the locking ring as you can see there's a little groove around so that's where the ring goes in. If, in case, you won't see any groove, then you'll have to go and 
push on the agitator from inside so the shaft will go in a little bit. Now we're going to install the locking ring into the groove and use the needle nose pliers to install it all the way. It's in. So next uh, dust cap goes on. And now we can install the belt. For this I'm going to put my gloves on. And then we're going to install the belt. So put it on the pump pulley. Then we're going to put it on the motor pulley. And turn the motor to the right. As we did when we were taking it off. Installed on the transmission pulley and turn it slowly so the belt will pop on. Okay, now we can remove the towel and put the washer upright. All right, now we can move that uh, small block out. Now we're going to lift the tub and slide the wood out. And now we're going to lift the washer upright. Carefully, it is heavy. And we can open the top. And put the strap on. Remove the wooden block. All right, install the front panel on the bottom hinges. Match the cutouts with the hinges. Push it down and push it forward. And now we're going to secure the front panel to the cabinet. We're going to use this 5 16 inch screw. Again, we're going to push the top to the side out of the way and then uh, repeat the procedure on the opposite side. And now we can remove the holding strap. Simply unhook it and lower the top. Put it down and push it to lock on both clips. Now we can remove the tape. Turn the water on. Plug the washer in and make sure it runs good. Thank you for being a part of another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. For any of your future appliance repair projects, please check out our other repair videos available on our site, on Facebook, and on YouTube.